the go out the green light for 70 years together mm-hmm. we may be doing this for 70 years mm-hmm. and after that then you can ask your question see it makes sense huh go back to the chat room and see what's going on there nothing All right. rabbi barrel wine Moshe addresses eternal faults and problems that are inherent in the Jewish people and all of human society. People are by nature dundiks, burdensome, and quarrelsome. By making us aware of this ongoing human failing, Moshe intends to lead us out of the wilderness that such attitudes create. I thought that was like very realistic, like the natural state of people is to be annoying. And so the, the Jews in, in the wilderness and their constant complaining and their Quetching and they're like, ah, oh, you know, who's Moshe to appear so holy? And aren't we all prophets? And don't we all have equal access to God? Uh, that's just, that's how people are, not just in the wilderness 3,000 years ago, but in Pico Robertson today. Judaism enjoins a positive mental attitude. They asked the question that I want to answer. Okay. Okay. When you get to when you get to this, point. one should develop a good eye, aka the ability to see the good. Okay. So the rabbis of the Talmud taught us, even if there should be a sharp knife held at your throat, uh-huh. do not despair completely. So not all successful people have a positive mental attitude in all areas of their life, but in all those areas of their life where they are successful, people always have a positive mental attitude. So like you may be depressed about you know various things in your life, but as far as the Torah talk show, you know, whatever problems you have, like, you know, you always pull it together and see some positive things in, in the show, and that's what enables the show to be successful. So this made me think of that song by Journey, Don't Stop Believing, and I thought, oh, this would be perfect, or like, tie in to the point that the, the Torah is trying to make. But then I like, I looked up the lyrics, and it's not at all uplifting. Like, do you remember the song Don't Stop Believing by Johnny? Just a small town girl, girl living in a lonely world. world. She took, took the, the midnight train going anywhere. Just a city boy born and raised in South Detroit. Detroit and took the midnight train going anywhere. There's nothing uplifting about this. You know, and then there's some singer in a smoky room. There's a smell of wine and cheap perfume. For a smile, they can share the night. It goes well, on, on, and and on, on and on and on and on. Don't strangers, stop. Oh, strangers waiting up, up and down the boulevard. No, you gotta sing it right. Strangers waiting up. Go ahead. Like, where's the uplift in here? Where's the Torah in this song? Like, Working hard to get my fear. Everybody wants a thrill. Is that a Torah message? Everybody One wants a thrill. Some will win, some will lose, some were born to sing the blues. Oh, the movie never ends. It goes on, on and, and, and on, on and, and on. on. Don't stop believing. But, like, you, know, this you hear song, the song, this don't song. stop believing. You think it's like an uplifting Torahic song. Well, you know, the Sopranos used it at the end of the... Yeah, yeah. That's why yeah. it's so famous now. Yeah. That's why people sing it. Nobody sang it before then. But with the, the title would fool you. Like, I thought, oh, you know, let me do a little riff on Don't Stop Believing. It's Journey. It's not It's not going to be like, you know, a Queen song. This is just like, you know... It's a real downer. It's like... <laughs> and it says, hold on to the feeling. Can you imagine, like, Moshe, like, midway through the Pasha says, like, breaks into song and starts singing, Okay, Jews, don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling of freedom. Like, it just wouldn't... I don't think it'd be congruent with, with this week's Pasha. So, I thought this song would be uplifting, but it's a real downer. Kind of like the ending of The Sopranos. No, and then The Sopranos is kind of just weird. Kind of like left you like, what just happened? Okay, so there's a question here that you wanted to answer in the cat chat room. The cat room? <laughs> um, no, they were... Oh, the, the, they... Ooh, we missed a lot of stuff. They had a whole conversation. Um, they, Rumple Foreskin, who I need to know who that is, if you're going to ask a question. Uh, why is it a common trend for child abuse to be covered up in the firm community? Um... I, I, my answer is going to be different than what you... I want you both... We'll both answer it. Okay. My answer is, I am shocked that there can even be a cover-up. Because to cover something up, you have to know what's there. Mm-hmm. My attitude has been... My perception of the firm community is they have no concept of child abuse. They don't even believe it exists. They don't even recognize it when it's put in front of them. They're bl- it's like they're wearing sunglasses in the middle of the day. You know, they, 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 they can't see it. 
Mm. You know, they have no, they don't, they are, the from community doesn't know the difference between, you know, an abuse cycle and a motorcycle. They, they, everybody around them, including themselves, could be abusing, they won't, they don't know, they just think it's normal behavior. They don't appreciate it. Then you tell them, you know, I don't want to have kids because I don't want to repeat the cycle of abuse. They go, what, what are you talking about? You know, they, they have no, they, they don't have a musag for it. Ain't miss that clue. They don't have any concept of it. So how do you cover up something that you don't know exists? You know, it's like, I think that the only time the from community understands child abuse mm -hmm. is when there's some sort of sexual molestation. Right. You know, one of the Rebbies, you know, molests some boy in a hater. Right. right. So the only abuse that they ever hear about is sexual. So they think when you say, oh, I'm a child abuser, that means you have a thing for little boys. Right. 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 So when I say, you know, the, oh, I'm going to be a child abuser, they go, you know, they think I'm some sort of perverted pervert, you know, some sort of right. sick, you know, whatever. You just see it in your eyes. Yeah, and you know, plus there's that YouTube. Uh, yeah. So, so they think I'm some sort of pervert or something, all right? Because they don't understand that just neglecting a child because you don't love them enough because you're so busy, you know, because you have ten of them, right? Mm -hmm. Or you know, simple things like that, or or that you know that, um, you know, you don't you you don't naturally love kids so much, so you know, you're not gonna. Force it just because you want the mitzvah. Look at me, I did a mitzvah. I had 12 kids, but I don't even want any of them. You know? So they don't understand that that is child abuse. They don't, they don't, it doesn't register. It's like, nothing there. It didn't click. You know what I'm saying? Okay, now your take. Well, I don't think there's a universal from community reaction to child abuse in this regard. First of all, I don't think there's any more child abuse. Than I don't think there's much less child abuse in the Froome community than any other community. So, the, I don't think there's a universal reaction to child abuse in the Froome community. Different Orthodox communities have different reactions to child abuse. Some will say, you know, take the offender right to, to the police. And others will say, well, let's keep this quiet and handle it in-house. So, there are different reactions. Generally speaking, the Orthodox attitude has been to try to handle things uh, without going to the, the Gentile authorities, but uh, it, it's changing in some ways, and uh, but, but there isn't any constant orthodox reaction to child abuse. Right. Now, you posted a thing last week about um, um, about what happened in, in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a new documentary film coming out about an editor of a Jewish newspaper in Baltimore who's been on the the path exposing uh, sexual predators in the community. Right. See, I think that's. I think what's happening is that in the from community because they don't understand child abuse, and the only time they hear about it is molestation. I really hold by that. They they, they yeah. equate sexual uh, sexual molestation all the stuff with child abuse. And that's it. They don't know. They don't even understand what I'm talking about. And like even this person who asked the question, mm -hmm. this bleb the champ is not going to tell us what his name is. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm done with this person because in, unless you're willing to tell me who you are, I hate talking to. He's you. Benjamin from Queens. You don't know Benjamin from Queens? Uh, no. It was Rumple Foreskin who asked the. I don't know. I'm so confused. Between I need to know who your names are. I need to know who you are. I don't deal well with uh, with, with anonymous uh, internet. Rumpel Foskin, Shlomo from Pico. You don't know Shlomo from Pico? Shlomo from Pico? Who's Shlomo from Pico? Oh, he's a Sonic. He's the hidden Sonic of Pico Robertson. Rumpel Foskin is Shlomo from Pico? Yeah. <laughs> okay. he, Benjamin's offering, offering to call in on my phone. Oh, our, our friend Benjamin Jenkins. You know Benjamin Jenkins. I don't even know who these people are. I don't know who these people are for crying out. <laughs> I don't know anybody. All right, so here's the thing. Forest Hills, New York. Benjamin. Okay. Here's Mahana the thing. Kodesh. What does that mean? Mahana Kodesh. Uh, Shlomo Malacho. You know Shlomo. It's Malacho. a shul over there. That's where he goes. He goes yeah, there. yeah. Whatever. All right. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Brokashem. Brokashem. Right. You're all holy. All, right, go all ahead. of God's people are holy. All right, go ahead. 
So don't stop.